In the previous lessons, we discussed about many locators, that is the get by role, get by label, get by text, and so on. In this lesson, we'll learn about the CSS selectors and how can we use them to locate web elements using Playwright. Now, one thing I should mention before using CSS selectors is that Playwright documentations recommend to use the locators over any other thing. But you can always use other things like CSS selectors to select web elements because it provides more freedom when selecting web elements. CSS selectors can be used to select web elements based on their tag name, class name, ID, or any attribute and its value. So let's go ahead and see how can we do the same. Now to test CSS selectors, we can use the dev tools and while being in dev tools, hit control and F and you will see a search bar like thing popping up in which we can test our selectors. So let's say what we want to do is select all the heading elements in the page. So let's just go ahead and highlight the element. You can see an H1 element with default as the text. Now we can use the CSS tag name selector to select this element. And the tag name is the name within the angled braces that is H1 opening tag, H1 closing tag. So we call this as the H1 tag name. Now don't confuse it with the roles. That is the role of this element is a heading, but its tag name is H1 and CSS selectors uses the tag name directly. So what we can do is just type in H1, hit enter, and you can see it goes ahead and selects all the H1 elements. You can cycle through the selections by just clicking on the arrows. You can see this one, another one, another one, just like that. Now let's go ahead and do the same with Playwright. So to use CSS selectors, we can use the page object and call the locator method. Now to this locator method, we can provide a string of our selector. And in this case, we are using CSS selectors, so we can explicitly define that by prefixing our selector with CSS equals like this. Now this is optional because Playwright goes ahead and detects the selector automatically, but it's all right if you provide it as well. So here we want to select H1 elements and then we can just go ahead and highlight those elements. Hit enter and you can see all the H1 elements getting highlighted. So now we'll look at how can we select elements based on their class. So one other thing is that let's say we want to remove all the highlighted elements. So what we can do instead is again use the locator and just give it something like the footer, which element is not visible in the viewport, but is at the very last. You can see the footer element. So it's just a small dip to remove the highlight if it bothers you. And now moving on to the class selectors, that is here, you can see we have this success button. Let's say we want to select it. If we go ahead and inspect the code, you can see its class name is this right here. That is a class attribute, which are used by CSS to style elements. And here you can see it has two classes. That is, there is a space in between two words and these words are called classes. And we can just use this button outline success word right here to select this element. So we will start with the tag name. In this case, it is button. So button like this. And then to use the class name, we just add a dot after the tag name and then write the class name, which in this case is button hyphen outline hyphen success like this. Now you can see it goes ahead and selects this element. So let's do the same with our playwright locator. So page dot locator. We will skip the CSS equals because it's optional. And now what we can do is start with the tag name that is button. And then to add a class name, we just start with a dot and then specify the class name. In this case, it is button 
hyphen outline hyphen success. Now let's go ahead and highlight it. You can see it is getting highlighted. We can go ahead and click it as well. And you can see it is getting clicked. So this is the class selector. Now we can move on to the ID selector. That is, let's say we'd like to select this arrow button. And if I go ahead and inspect it, you will see it is a button with a class of button primary drop down toggle and then it also has an id attribute which is set to button group drop one like this so let's go ahead and use this to select the element to do that we can just use the button tag name to start with and to specify the id instead of a dot we start with a hash and then just type in the id name that is button group drop one like this you can see the element is highlighted so let's test it with our page selector again and let's remove the locator highlight so we'll use page locator again start with button and then because we're using an id we'll start with hash and specify the id name that is button group drop one and then let's just go ahead and click it this time you can see it got and clicked and we were able to see the drop down links cool so now let's move on to the last type of selector which we're gonna discuss today that is the attribute and value selector so let's say we come to this input field and you can see it is a read only type so it has a attribute which is read only now we will not be able to select this using the role selector but here instead what we can do is just use the locator that is page locator and to start with we just use the tag name in this it is input and then to specify an attribute we do that inside of square brackets like this so inside of this square brackets we can specify the attribute name in this case it is read only just like the class the value the id and other things so we can go ahead and say read only and then let's highlight it you can see our read only input field getting highlighted of course we can use the id selector as well and the class selector as well but this is a good case of showing the attribute selector now we can also select elements based on the attribute and its corresponding value that is let's say we'd like to select this correct value input field right here you can see it is an input field with the value as correct value so let's say we'd like to just select it so we'll again use the page locator and let's keep the input with box brackets because we're going to use an attribute selector let's type out the attribute name in this case it is value so we'll type in value and then we'll specify its value that is correct value in this case so a equal sign and then we'll use quotes and do note that because this string is starting with a double quote and also ending with that we will use single quotes in between and you can use others as well that is the double quote it does not matter but make sure you wrap them within quotes and then write correct space value like this and if i go ahead and press enter you will see the correct value input field getting highlighted so you can use the attribute name to select the element or you can explicitly say that the attribute name and its value should be this so we learned about four type of css selectors that is the tag name selector the class name selector the id selector and the attribute and its value selector
So that's how we can use CSS selectors to locate web elements using Playwright.